The Disrupt Education vlog can be found on YouTube. To hear it in podcast form, search Disrupt Education on any of the following podcast platforms. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, or Stitcher. Welcome to this episode of Disrupt Education. I'm here with Courtney McGovern. Nice to see you. Good Thank to you see for you inviting too. me downtown Chicago. Yeah, of course. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So, my name's Courtney, like you mentioned. Um, I recently graduated from New York University. I graduated there with a degree in nonprofit organization management and a minor in Spanish language. And I currently work for a nonprofit that my twin sister and I co founded about six years ago when we were in high school called Hope Sin. And our mission is to empower families living in Guatemala City and help develop the next generation of humanitarian leaders. How did you get into that in Guatemala? Tell us that mm -hmm. story. Well, my family kind of fell into international service on a whim. My parents heard about this opportunity to build a playground in Guatemala and they jumped on the uh, opportunity and a month later after hearing about it we were on a plane to Guatemala City and uh, we built two playgrounds. One was at an all-girls orphanage and the second was in a rural town and ever since then just fell in love with service. Um, went to different countries building playgrounds but eventually back to Guatemala and connected with a certain set of communities in the city that are all centered around the city's garbage dump. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just maintained relationships with families there and local organizations and have really just committed to that set of communities. So. Right. What was your educational path? You, mm -hmm. you, you went to New York University, yep. um, but before that and then after that, how, how can you describe your education? I, I think I was privileged to grow up in a great school district. Mm -hmm. um, I went in the northwest suburbs, K through 12, mm -hmm. didn't relocate out of um, the same town or community my whole childhood. Um, so I probably had a pretty run-of-the-mill, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to some extent, education. Um, and went off to college. That was the thing everyone does. Yeah. And um, had a, a great time at, at college mm -hmm. and um, graduated one semester ahead. Nice. <laughs> Saved nice. my parents. You're right. <laughs> Hopefully you got <laughs> yeah. some of that back. I huh? don't know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think I deserved any of it. So. Um, do you think yeah. that, that your high school experience, did that prepare you for the next step or was it totally different? Was it a shock going to NYU? Mm. Well, moving from a small town mm -hmm. to a big city was yeah. a shock. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I was pretty focused on what I wanted to do. I always wanted to work for some nonprofit. I didn't know it was going to be the one that I started. Yeah. But I wanted to work for a nonprofit. And, um, living in New York City had within my reach, you know, internships anywhere at the, from the UN to like a local small nonprofit. Right. Um, so I feel like for as kind of traditional my like K through 12 was, I had a very unconventional experience at college, just living in a big city. Mm -hmm. You didn't really have like a central um, like sport or event that you really rallied around as like a college but rather you just kind of felt like you were taking classes in the city and then doing whatever else you were interested in right. Um, right. with the majority of your time. What was it that, that was it the trips that you took with your family that made you want to give back and, and create a not-for-profit? Um, was there anything in school that added to that or maybe took away from that? I feel like the most that I learned about the world, I learned outside of the classroom. Um, again, very, very privileged to be able to travel mm -hmm. and see third world countries and not just see one, but see a variety of communities, cultures, 
um, economic backgrounds, um, and I feel like what I when I really grasped different global concepts, it was when I was out there doing direct service. Right. Um, I think we learned like history and things like that in in school, but. Um, actually getting out there and seeing the world and, s and actually having a conversation with the person who might be in some kind of challenging situation right. was a lot more informative than trying to read about statistics or trends or right. anything like that. Um, so yeah, I think having the privilege of having direct conversation with someone mm -hmm. uh, that was struggling with some kind of challenge and overcoming some kind of challenge was right. more informative than trying to read about it or learn about it. Is, it. is there any way that you think you would change in-house education? Is there, is there any way you could incorporate that or, mm -hmm. or how would you change it to maybe go in more depth of mm -hmm. learning at, at a high school level? So even people without the means could yeah. possibly you know, uh, have some of these, um, you know, experiences, learning experiences. How, how would you change that? Well, I think the change for, for me in my situation was gaining different perspective and talking to people that were what I thought were so different than myself. So I think creating more opportunities for dialogue for students, mm -hmm. whether that's across socioeconomic status, religion, race, um, even just their day-to-day -day routines. Mm -hmm. Having just certain students who wouldn't normally talk to maybe another group of kids, just talk and have more opportunities to gain perspective, because I think that's what the biggest thing that we've seen students um, gain from like our trips to Guatemala mm -hmm. or um, from my own personal experience was just getting a glimpse into someone else's way of life and not seeing it as like a, they've struggled with this or it's hard for them in this way but looking at wow they're really good at that and they have this skill or they've known something more, they know something more than I do. Right. Not like trying to patronize anyone. Sure. Just trying to learn about strengths that come from different circumstances. Mm -hmm. on, these, on these trips, mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about those. So yeah. if there are young people out there mm -hmm. who want to get involved with Hope Sin mm -hmm. or another entity, well, we'll stick with Hope Sin. Mm -hmm. How does that work? What, what do you, where do people find you? People usually <laughs> find us from our website, mm -hmm. um, hopesin.org, mm -hmm. um, or they've had a friend that have gone that's gone on the trip, um, and they reach out. But the trips um, in the past, historically, we've really just focused on two types of projects. One, which is more of like a community development project, where we go in and work alongside a family to build one a home for them with them um, so it's really more about you're getting this week with the family you're trying to build relationships you're trying to learn about each other um, and like we talked about before just gaining perspective right. and right. building your these you know opportunities for empathy mm -hmm. and um, so we have the house building and then we also have a medical clinic. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of local doctors from the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. All different specialties. Yeah. They come down with us and they basically will see, you know, 30, 40 patients a day from yeah. with diverse uh, symptoms, diagnoses. Yeah. Um, and so our students will go in with them and shadow the mm -hmm. doctors and um, and try and get a kind of an understanding about some medical, um, some yeah. medical it's things. Insight, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you had somebody uh, who had the same uh, 
outlook on wanting to become a helpful person mm -hmm. and create um, an entity like mm -hmm. you did mm -hmm. or be a part of one and they're 17 years old what do you tell them I would say try and have as many conversations as you can with the group of people that you are looking to help mm -hmm. or get involved with um, look for local advocates and leaders that are already doing incredible work and try and come alongside them and get behind them um, figure out what you're passionate you're passionate about and figure out how with the tools and the skills that you already have mm -hmm. how you can start to make a difference even if it's small um, if you're good at coding then you know I'm, there's a lot of nonprofits that maybe work with a cause that you really like that could use a website update or something like right. that or if you're good with dance there's a lot of different um, dance programs in inner city areas or in um, specialized you know education programs or mm -hmm. things like that where you can use your skill for another group of um, people I think that's a good way to start is for a 17 year old to realize that they don't have to go and learn this like profound knowledge mm -hmm. to help someone out they probably already have the skill sets to do so what's next for Hope Sin? well I just returned from a four and a half week mm -hmm. uh, trip in Guatemala and um, the last Two and a half weeks were really just focused on listening. <laughs> we yeah. were not the ones sharing any information or expertise, but we really were just listening to advocates and families um, who are raising children with disabilities mm -hmm. in either extreme poverty situa or situations or settings mm -hmm. or um, impoverished settings. And so um, one week we spent five days we talked to 36 families wow. who had children with disabilities in the garbage dump communities mm -hmm. and just had kind of this overwhelming sense of mm, overwhelming sense that they wanted so much more for mm -hmm. their children yeah. and weren't sure where to find the resources or um, or I guess diagnosis or mm -hmm. um, tools to help their child yeah. um, and then the the other week that we were there we really got to listen to these leading organizations who were doing such amazing work mm -hmm. um, and so we're hoping to formalize um, a network that was represented throughout the time that we were there mm -hmm. of these organizations to really help them elevate their awareness and the quality of their work right. Um, right. and also just find out how we can support them as an organization. Honorable stuff. Um, it is it is amazing. Um, I've read a lot of stuff online. Yeah. Um, your story is there. It's at uh, is it hopesend.org? Yeah. org. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll put that up down here for everybody <laughs> yeah. to take a look at. Um, thank you so much yes, for sharing. Of course. Thank um, you for coming. Yes. Appreciate. <laughs> um, we have a lot to learn from others, um, we do. and I think that's <laughs> that's very very key. It's a commonality yeah. that I run up against a lot. So yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. For the next time on Disrupt Education, guys. We'll see you next time.